Hi, so I'm Jessica Peterson, flight test engineer at Edwards Air Force Base. And today I'm gonna to tell you about collision avoidance flight test engineering, a system that I was very fortunate to get to work on. So a little bit of my background, I grew up in the Antelope Valley, went to Courtsell Elementary, Joe Walker Middle School and Courtsell High School. In order to do my job, I had to go and get engineering degrees. So I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and got an engineering degree in mechanical engineering. After that, I decided that I wanted to get even more knowledge and I wanted to specialize in mechanical engineering and flight control systems. So I went and got a master's of science in mechanical engineering at the Naval Postgraduate School. I've been working at Edwards since 2005 and I've worked on a lot of different programs. One of them is the RQ-4, which is an unmanned vehicle that has the pilot on the ground flying with a mouse and keyboard. The other is the F-16 and the automatic systems, and that's what I'm gonna tell you about today. I got to go to test pilot school in 2017, and with that, it has allowed me to fly in the back seat of many different airplanes. You can see a picture of me here with a T-38 that has my name on the canopy rail, which is pretty cool to have. All right, so what does it take to be a flight test engineer? Well, in addition to have the engineering degree, there's a lot of training that you have to do. And so one of them is the altitude chamber. So if you're flying in an airplane up at say 30,000 feet, one of the things, one of the issues that you have is that there isn't very much oxygen. And so if the mask that you're wearing or the canopy doesn't work correctly, you're not gonna have enough oxygen. And so they train you how to identify if you don't have enough oxygen by putting you in a chamber on the ground where they start to remove the oxygen. The other thing type of training we do is called the centrifuge. So everyone here, I want you to think, have you ever been on a roller coaster and felt the force on your body on a roller coaster? That same thing happens in an airplane. And so if the airplane is turning, you can pull what are called G forces. So nine Gs, which is what the F-16 can pull, is nine times the force of gravity. Well, the problem with that is that if you're pulling G-forces, it will pull the blood from your brain. And so you have to be trained on how to push that blood and keep it in your brain. It's called a G-strain. I also had to learn survival. So if I have to eject from an airplane, I have to know how to use my parachute and how to survive on the water or the land. I wanna show you what this looks like. So here is a video of me flying in the T6 and you're gonna see the dynamics of the airplane.
All right, so let's talk about where we do this type of test. Where is Edwards Air Force Base? Well, it's in California, pretty close to where you are right now. If we zoom in, you'll see it's north and east of Palmdale and Lancaster. Zoom in again, and you'll see that it's in this container, this gray container in Google Earth. And this is what it looks like. So Edwards Air Force Base is next to a big lake bed. And you can see in this picture that the runways are right here. And that's where we land the airplanes. All right, so let's talk about automatic collision avoidance testing. The automatic ground collision avoidance prevents collision with the ground and air prevents collision with another airplane. So here's a picture of us testing the automatic ground collision avoidance system. It's a system that prevents collision with a mountain if the pilot doesn't realize it's there or if the pilot passes out because of all those forces on their body. So how does auto GCAS work? Well, it's a system that does an automatic recovery, meaning the pilot doesn't have to do anything, the computer does the maneuver for him to avoid the ground. To figure it out, the airplane knows where it is, what its maneuver looks like, and then it knows where the ground is. I say it's like Google Earth for the military. And it uses a prediction of the aircraft trajectory to figure out when to activate. So the trick of testing an automatic system is how do you stay safe if the system fails or doesn't work? You don't want to hit the mountain if the automatic ground collision avoidance system doesn't work correctly. So the way we did this is we used something called a terrain clearance buffer, meaning that we increase the ground in the computer so it thought that it was higher than it actually was. If the system didn't work right, it gave the pilot time to fly the airplane away from the ground. So let me show you a test point. You're gonna see where we start the airplane at 43,000 feet, so over eight miles above the ground. He's gonna roll the airplane, turn inverted, and pull the nose towards the ground. You're gonna see auto GCAS activate and the computer flies the airplane away from the ground. So let me tell you what you're going to see. This is a video of the heads up display. You're gonna see the flight path marker. When this is above the horizon, the airplane's going up, and when it's below the horizon, it's going down. This is the altitude that the airplane is at with the height above the ground. So in this picture, it's at 44,000 feet. The airspeed is the speed the airplane is going, and G is the number of times the weight of gravity that the pilot is feeling on their body. So this is a test point that you'll see. The airplane's gonna be flying towards the ground and as the chevrons come in, when they touch, that's when the computer is in control and maneuvering the airplane away from the ground. Here we get 450, 1.45. So when he's kind of maneuvered. Six Gs. This looks good. See right there, it's a good test point. The system activated and we were able to get good results. I'm gonna show you another video. This is where auto GCAS doesn't activate. We don't have any terrain clearance buffer and we're making sure that the pilot can fly all the way down to 90 feet above the ground without the system getting in the way. Go ahead and watch. <laughs> He's going down, five degrees down. He's going to in. So the pilot got down to 90 feet. Auto GCAS was thinking about activate, but never did, which is a great test point.
The last thing I want to tell you about is the automatic air collision avoidance system. So this is a system that prevents two airplanes from hitting each other. I'm going to show you why. This is a video recreation of a mid-air mishap that happened at Edwards Air Force Base. An F-16 turned in to avoid some birds and hit a T-38. Didn't realize it was there. It killed the pilot and the backseater in the T-38. Now this shows you what would happen with the automatic air collision avoidance system. The airplane could still turn in, but at the last moment, the computer takes control, maneuvers the airplane away, and prevents the mid-air mishap from happening, saving lives. So we tested this system. First, I'm going to show you a normal rejoin. This is how pilots fly. I want you to see how close the two airplanes get to each other without the system needing to activate. You can see the airplane turning in, coming up, getting very close, but they don't hit and they're safe. Hey, rejoin complete. So now let's show a test point. This is one where we put in some buffers to make sure the airplanes don't actually hit each other, but they come in and the automatic system will take control. It's going to happen very quickly. You'll see one airplane here in the middle and another one will come in from the right. You'll hear a solid tone and that's when the computer is in control. You can hear the pilot say at the end, that was awesome. And it's because we've been planning for a long time to do that test point. So some closing thoughts. Testing the automatic collision avoidance system has been very rewarding. You've learned about how the system works and how we had to test it safely to make sure that if it didn't work correctly, the pilot had time to take control. I hope you've enjoyed learning about it and about flight tests at Edwards Air Force Base.